Hey there, it's Amanda with the Pretty House Team. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about seller paid closing cost. So this could be really exciting for you. You're under contract, you're headed to closing, you're actually gonna make some money on a house that you're selling. But what happens when you get to the closing table and the numbers are really different than what you expected and different not in a good way? That's where seller paid closing costs come in. Now this is totally separate from buyer paid closing costs. And you may have negotiated to pay some of the buyer's closing costs in your contract. But these are completely separate, standalone, mandatory costs that you're going to have to pay at closing. And it's best that you know about them kind of ahead of the game. There's basically six different costs that you will incur when you sell your property. So let's talk about them now. The first, and I think you can probably just guess that this is going to happen, is a tax. I mean, there's only two things in life that are certain, death and taxes. And you know the government's going to get theirs. So when you sell your property, you're going to have what's called dock stamps and surtax on the deed. This is 0.7 cents per $100 on the sales price. Basically, just take your sales price and multiply it by 0.007, and you just figured out how much you're going to have to pay in taxes. Now, if you're a foreign real estate investor, that means you don't have a green card or a social security card, you're going to have to pay 15% right off the top in taxes. There is a loophole if you're selling your property for less than 300000 so if that's you, click on the link below, and I've got details on how you can waive the 15% tax right off the top. The next closing cost that I'm going to talk about for sellers is owner's title insurance. And this is probably the biggest cost you'll incur, and it's also the one that doesn't get talked about very much at all. Okay, so what is this? This is the biggie. This is, basically, it's a CYA. It's a cover your assets policy. If there are liens or judgments or fraud or your crazy third cousin comes out of the woodwork saying they have rights to the property that you've sold, this policy sets you free. You don't have to go to court. You don't have to fight about it. The title company will handle everything for you. This is a mandatory fee and it will be charged to you at closing. But how much does it cost? So it's state regulated, which means that the title companies don't get to make up a number. It's state regulated and they should all be charging about the same thing. I've also got some information in the link below that will show you at what purchase price, how much that title insurance policy is going to cost you. But for a half a million dollar house, it'll probably cost you around $2,500. And this is a seller paid closing cost. The third cost you're going to incur is title search and closing fee. Now, these aren't crazy fees, so don't panic. These fees basically come from the title company. The first, the title search fee is pretty nominal. It's normally less than $100. And it basically goes through all your past documents, any municipal lien information, all that jazz. The second is the closing fee. I mean, the title company has to get paid something, right? So this is where you have doc prep, processing, wire transfers, UPS. My title company doesn't charge any nickel and diming information. So they do one flat fee, you're out the door with the title search and the closing fee. So those are your first three fees, taxes, owner's title insurance, and then your title search and closing fee. So the fourth seller paid closing cost fee, and the one that I think most sellers get agitated by the most, is the estoppel fee. Now, what is it? It sounds kind of fancy, but it's really just a little annoying. This is a fee from your homeowners association to find out how much the dues are, if there's any assessments due, if you're in arrears, and how dues are to be collected. That's it. Just a piece of paper that says that. However, the homeowners associations used to charge crazy numbers to get that piece of paper. I mean, it could be like $500. But in 2017, the Florida Realtors got a law passed that capped the estoppel certificate fee at $250. That's still high, I agree. But it cannot be more than $250 unless, you know, there's always a loophole. If you're delinquent in your HOA fees, they can charge a fee for that. If you need the form expedited within three days, they can charge a fee for that. However, the estoppel fee should not be more than $250. Here's another little interesting seller paid closing cost. Now, this is in Pinellas County. So if you're selling a house in Pinellas County, your water bill is going to be a seller paid closing cost. Now, why do you think that that has to be on there? Because Pinellas County can actually file a lien on your house if there is an unpaid water bill. Also, when your new owner goes to turn on the water, they can refuse to turn on water to a new owner or they can require the new owner to pay your water bill. So to make sure that everything is on the up and up and that the new owners can bathe, because let's be honest, it's Florida, it's hot here, we need to bathe. You have to pay the water bill on the closing statement and make sure that you're at a zero balance. And finally, the last seller paid closing cost is obviously da -da -da -da, property taxes. 
So I'll try to explain this pretty quickly. It can get confusing, but just follow me. So if you're in the middle of the year and you're closing, they will take from you the first day of the year all the way through the closing day. Then for the buyers, they'll take the day after closing all the way to the last day of the year. However, if you're in fourth quarter, November, December, sometimes October, they will take the entire tax bill because it is due at that time. Then they will do some credits and prorations and whatnot, but they will take it all unless you can prove that you've paid it and your word is not proof. I know. So that's it. Those are your six seller paid closing costs. You've got estoppel fees, you've got the water bill, you've got the property taxes, you've got the doc stamps and surtax on the deed, your owner's title insurance, and the title search and closing thing. That's about it. That's all you should expect to see. Now I'm just a little tip. If you have agents coming to interview with you to list your property and they don't show up with a seller net sheet in hand, that should be a red flag for you. They should already have that prepared when they walk in your front door. And a few other final tips. If you plan on not attending your closing, tell your realtor. Tell your realtor the very second you make that plan. Don't tell her the day before closing. If you're still married and you're just separated, tell your realtor, because in Florida, it gets ugly. Both people have to be at the closing if you are not legally divorced. I don't care if you've been separated 18 years. You gotta be legally divorced. And these are just a little small things that can create big headaches at the end of the day when you're just trying to sell your house. So I hope you found this information helpful. As always, all of my notes are in the link below. Have a great day. And I'm Amanda with the Pretty House Team.